Okay. Artistically, I cannot follow that. There is no way aesthetically I'm going to follow that either. This is techie, there's um, charts, it's not exciting, it's not beautiful, and it's not, yeah, I really like that, actually, thank you. I didn't expect that at all. It's, uh, I, I'm not selling it at all. You know, you know, you know when the first act is really beating your own act, Martin, and that's pretty much the problem I've got now. Okay, so setting the context. Um, I teach at the Open University. I teach network engineering, cybersecurity, network security. I teach nerds to run simple things like the internet. Okay, and over time, we've dis I teach a closed source content on FutureLearn. I teach a closed source content via the Cisco Networking Academy. And the problem you have with closed platforms is they don't leak out. So I've created leaky content that is publicly available to anybody, including our students, that they can engage via Twitter and other social media platforms as well. So I've taken an OER approach to a closed um, source resource, okay? We push it out every day. We push it out at particular times. We try and get it when the students or the participants are likely to look at it. So it's an action research process. It's constantly experimenting. We're constantly looking at the sort of the best times. So the first Twitter feed I'm dealing with is my OU Cisco Twitter feed. Um, this runs over a nine-month duration because that's the norm for open university modules. It's degree level two. It teaches the Cisco network engineering. We currently have around 1,300 followers. So it's not as large as you'd think. But then, on the other hand, what we find is we actually get greater impact and greater um, engagement from the followership because they choose to follow it based on it's related to their studies. We also have a FutureLearn MOOC. It's the cybersecurity MOOC that our university did with GCHQ. So different emphasis, lower level in it's designed for absolute beginners, um, but it takes them to a point where they're slightly knowledgeable and potentially slightly dangerous when it comes to their understanding of cybersecurity. And the, mod, the MOOC varies, has varied over time between 2,000 to 10,000 participants on each presentation of it. And we currently have around 2,900 followers on this platform. So a lot of people I follow, a lot of people I engage with, a lot of people I have a conversation with take very much the view Twitter is all about your followership. Well, actually, I don't think it is. Um, it's all about your visits, or it's all about your retweets. And my talk is going to be about Twitter impressions. Who actually looks at your content? So any of you here follow Barack Obama or Stephen Fry? Okay, at least, at least one of them. I'm more of a fan of Stephen Fry, but that's personal preference. They have probably about a 1.3% um, impression or impact rating with their multi-millions of followers. And that's because it's not timed, it's not planned, and most people just follow them because they're celebrity, and it's not about um, yeah, actually doing it as part of some other mission, some other study, or some other sort of process in their life. Yeah, they're just people that are cool, so they're following it. So what I've taken a view is that this is about pedagogy, this is about teaching, and this is about enhancing the learning of the individuals via the social media. So I've been fortunate enough to collect data over three years, which means that I've actually got sort of longitudinal view now of what's happening in this space. So impressions. And it's uh, any of you tweet. Yeah. So Martin, a recent tweet, which we won't go into any details. Did you look at the impressions on that? Large, wasn't it? Yeah, 55,000. So not, And that wasn't all your followers as well. It's all the people that saw that. So I'm picking on something. How many followers do you normally have on your Twitter account? About 9,000. So that was, a multi, that was a multiple of your actual followers. So you can see it's, it's like dropping a stone in a pond and you get that ripple effect. And that's what's interesting with t um, impressions. It's not that your followers necessarily see it. It's all the others that see it through feeds, through retweets, or other embedded content. Um, therefore, it's much more impactful. So I embed my Twitter 
um, content via our um, module sites. I embed it via other feeds, so people don't necessarily have to be followers to actually see it, which makes it more interesting as well. And it gives me then a good view of engagement. It gives me a good view of, well, are our students or are these community of practice interested in the stuff that we're actually dripping out? I mean, I'm dripping out geeky stuff, you know, how the internet works. Um, update profiles on the EIGRP um, routing protocol, which will probably send most of you to sleep, but these guys need to know it in order to become successful network engineers. So, first, we'll look at this chart. This is the cybersecurity. Every time there is a spike, that is when we actually see the module running. Well, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? So if we've got 2,900 followers, well, it started off at around 1,000. Um, this is the laser pointer. So this is early days. This is where it started. And then each presentation, you get different numbers of students. But what we're finding is it's spiking. And you can see here, that's when we're doing nothing. That's, that's a, there's zero output going on at the bottom, at the trough. But we have still got people get scrolling back and looking at our content. And this is a big gap where we ran nothing for a while. And now what we're finding is the long tail off of the MOOC. So this was the early adoption of the MOOC when people were more interested in it. Now that it's natural, people are becoming less interested in it. But what we are realizing is where the typical impact of a lot of um, social media, Twitter outputs, is anything between 1.3 to 3%, is we're probably getting around 15 to 20 percent impact for impressions because our followership are self-selecting and our followership were actually putting out content they would like to see so it's not your marketing tweets it's not um, sort of random stuff coming from a corporate brand perspective maybe i'm a little bit cynical about that but it's actual content they want to see because they've chosen to follow it because they have a subject matter interest in it next set of data this is our cisco module so this is an open university module We've managed to collect data over three years. So this is when we sort of started it early on, when we had two to 300 followers. This spike at the end was when they were all getting excited about revision. They got very excited about revision that year. That was the following year. You can see it's a bit more stable. Different cohorts, still a bit more stable. Now the current cohort, just slightly different performance, but still quite stable. And the followership's growing. And what we're also discovering now is ex-students are still following it. Why? To remind themselves of what they have learned. They're interested in this for their careers. They're interested for this because this do, yeah, helps them do the job that they're doing. So they're maintaining knowledge after they've actually studied the clever thing as well as a reinforcement, as an opportunity to engage. This is a little bit more of a self-selecting audience again. So MOOC are aspirational learners. This module is people who are already on a degree program that are looking for a career in network engineering. So they already kind of know what they're doing. And they know where they're going as well. And we're seeing instead of that 1.3 to 3% um, impact, we're actually looking at around 40-45% of the population are actually engaging with this at some time during the whole output. So we're getting quite a different population performance. Some of you were, um, saw some slides on MOOC data yesterday and you know, we talk about 15% being really good on a MOOC. This is high. This is different. And this is why I think we're probably chasing the wrong thing with social media. Everybody's about those retweets, about the followers and the visits. And I'm here to say, actually, it is about the impressions. And it's actually once you understand the impressions and you're understanding that you're putting out content related to your curriculum, related to your teaching and related to your studies, the followership is typically more engaged. And we can, I can actually look at where they're engaged, when they're engaged, and actually what tweets, yeah, what content works. Five minutes, thank you. So what can we see? Well, I think... For me, I cannot prove educational impact. I don't. I cannot prove are they going to um, 
become more clever because of this? Are they getting better grades? Are they passing the course? But what I am getting from the feedback from the community, because I've tweeted them and asked them, is they like this kind of thing because it helps them maintain their understanding, appreciation and awareness of the subject, i.e. they're engaging because they're interested in it. We promote each feed at the start of each course. We promote it at the start of the MOOC. We promote it via the um, sort of cherry emails, as we call them, at the Open University. Hi, guys, we're starting this module. You might want to have a look at this. But what we find is once the people engage with it, i.e. they start looking at it, um, they maintain that engagement because they discover it's actually quite useful and um, social media being this terrible f area of data analytical, you're giving away your life, heart and soul, actually no, they actually like it because we're giving them something that they're finding personally, professionally, educationally and potentially academically quite useful and it's helping us move beyond that typical impact view of that 1-3% to 3 for um, social media users. So I've kept it quite brief. I say it's a lot more techy and a lot less artistic. <laughs> and yeah, But the point that I'm trying to make is I think we've probably, as educators and open educators, slightly misunderstood social media. And if we actually start looking at the impressions and start designing learning content based on our courses around social media, we can leak that teaching out there and get an impact and a followership and an engagement from that community of practice. So thank you. I've been Andrew Smith. And any questions? Got loads. I've stunned them into silence, <laughs> <laughs> but not Martin. Can I kick off? Then? You can kick off by right. all means. Okay, um, I was really fascinated by that. The, the first thing I wondered was um, you were sort of counting the overall number of impressions. Yeah. I wondered, and it's, I'm sure it's beyond what you've got at the moment, that the sort of difference between different. Um, retweeters and and so on. You can get that data. Yeah, yeah. So um, again, it's it it is on a per tweet per output basis, yes. and Facebook allows you to track that back for about a year. Sorry, Facebook. Oh, Twitter. About Facebook. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of work with Facebook at the moment. Twitter <laughs> um, allows you to track that back for free for about a year. Right. And you okay. can actually look at that tweet and what has actually happened right. to that tweet. And the second thing I was curious about was the you've got this growing set of followers that yeah. come from one course onto the yeah. you know so, so you're going there is back a cumulative effect yeah, yeah. Um, and I wondered what how the numbers on the uh, instances of the MOOCs had varied over time is that declining um, so the data for the MOOC is. Obviously, we had the early adoption, large numbers, and it's mm. now stabilised at around two to 3,000 right, okay. per MOOC. Yeah. But because we've got the cumulative effect of yeah. the former community, even though somebody has finished studying the content, mm. it doesn't stop them thinking that they're actually yeah. still part of the course. Yes, yeah, that's great. And my final one is my own observation. I, I've been observing... My, uh, what's happened with my interaction with social media on different devices over the last 18 yeah. months. So it's not a scientific investigation, it's a sort of observational thing. And I certainly have noticed for myself, particularly using, say, Twitter on a mobile phone, on a smartphone, is that the um, Twitter algorithms, in case you missed it, etc., um, seem to me to be massively interfering with the tweets I see. Yes. And you can only make an impression from the ones. Yeah. You actually so twi twi Twitter has been doing what Facebook have been doing. It's just that Facebook is getting all the bad press about it, which is to deliberately put certain things in front of you that they think you will find preferable. Mm. Um, and I cannot pr see what the others are seeing, but mm. what I am seeing is I'm getting no change in my impressions over time. Right. Because okay. the, yeah, the big the big set of data is saying, well, you know, this is remaining, yeah, mm. sort of quite normal, quite stable, quite high. Yes. So, I mean, I've 
I have two or three social media accounts that I manage, and every so often my watch vibrates telling me, you might want to see so-and-so from your ever account because mm. you're following Well, Of course I'm following it. I've mm. created it. But they are mm. pushing that. Mm. Mm. Has any, anyone else got any questions? No, I think timing is we hand over to the next speaker. Oh, thank thank you, you very much, Andrew. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.